Yeah. Uh, hey, Jeff. Uh, you probably know I've been in a bunch of different courts, uh, both civil uh, district and criminal courts. I have a neighbor who right now is serving a 10-year prison sentence. Uh, she was also the same neighbor at LPN, was on mission trips, um, saved my son's, my stepson's life, I believe. I have seen so much stuff take place in these courts. I'm so glad that the Republican Party is finally talking about these issues. But I've got a couple of questions. One is, what do you do right now with this lady who should never be in jail? 23 and a half hours in solitary confinement, as you mentioned and uh, she should never be there. But the same thing is I've seen this whole thing, this trial by a jury of your peers. And when I've watched this take place, I've looked at the jury and I've said, there is no way in God's green earth that these people would be my peers. So they don't, they don't come from the same type of, uh, whether it's education, socioeconomic, anything like, you see people sometimes that look like they play, spend, their days playing, spend their days playing video games and drinking beer. And these are the people that are going to judge somebody. And I've seen what I think has been grave injustices with that. Can we also fix that as well? Is that an issue that the legislature can address? Well, the, the, the jury, uh, and again, how many jury trials, Judge, have you had this year so far? Eight. Eight. Um, uh, which, you know, with, with COVID is a whole other issue about jury trials during COVID. And, uh, the access to justice uh, from people, but you're guaranteed constitutionally, not only by the, the, the United States Constitution, but our Texas government, you're, you're, you're guaranteed a, a speedy trial, the right to a trial by your peers. Uh, the jury trial is a, is a right enshrined in the Constitution, and there are no qualifications in the, in the Constitution about um, the jury looking a certain way or the jury, jury being comprised of, of um, you know, of certain people that you're comfortable with. That's right. the lawyer's job to to pick who they believe that, that, That's where I think part of the problem is. I was actually in a voir dire process, a mock voir dire, and both sides were gonna recuse me. One side because I would have uh, educated the jury about some things. Another one because I wasn't gullible enough that, I, that he could convince me to like him to rule for his client. This is not justice. This is a manipulation game that these attorneys are playing. And if you get people that are not able to think through some of these things, they're easily manipulated, just like the left is today, in how they manipulate people. So it's not really a true jury of justice, and it's not a jury of your peers. It's a jury of people that sometimes, and I'm sorry to say it like this, because I don't mean disrespect to anybody, but, but lawyers pick people that they think that can manipulate or that might like them, so that they will say, okay, I'm going to rule with this attorney. Whatever the justice is, forget about that, um, but we are going to manipulate the jury, and I've seen it. Well, we, we, we have safeguards in place, too. I'm not saying there are not abuses and that doesn't happen. I think we have safeguards in place in the criminal and civil context, too, to, to make sure our, our, our justice system and our jury system is trustworthy and fair. Um, I've tried jury cases as a lawyer and, I, and as the chair of the Judiciary, Judiciary Committee in the House. I've worked on jury issues, and I, and I, I hear you. And, and I think there are some instances where you're right, but by and large, I think we do it well. What I'm more concerned about is overzealous. Um, uh, Sentencing. Maybe, maybe overzealous is the wrong word, but, but yeah. the, the discretion that we give to prosecutors to pursue certain cases when they, they shouldn't, and to uh, the vast majority of prosecutors are good, honest men and women who just want justice. They don't just want to win or you know, secure uh, victories. Yeah. Uh, Greg Willis, I think, is the best DA we have anywhere in Texas. Yeah. There are a lot like him, but there are some DAs that are just piss poor at their jobs and they need to be voted out of office, including this one in Cameron County. Five jurors on Melissa Lucio's case, five jurors, including the original jury foreperson, said that had we known that then now, had we seen evidence that was excluded from the trial, there's no way we would have convicted her, much less sentenced her to death. And they come out and said, don't do this. The jury foreperson and the DA in, in Cameron County now is basically thumbing his nose at him saying, what you say now doesn't matter. And so- Exactly, this so is a big problem. There are abuses and we gotta fix them when they happen for sure. You're, on, you're yeah. going to be on the jury unless and until someone is able to remove you from that. And there are two ways they can do that. Uh, you can be removed by, for cause, which means there's something that you said in your uh, uh, answering the question that is such that there's there's not really a way the, the judge can have you sit on this case. Okay. So that's a, a strike for cause. And okay. then there are preemptory challenges, which means that 
the lawyers don't have to tell us the reason. They have a certain number of those uh, challenges and strikes that they can use. So let's have a discussion between Ms. Uh, uh, Moncrief and Mr. Dunlap about how they would go about uh, <coughs> determining their strikes based on uh, the very limited information you all gave today. Okay, so I would, I'm gonna use one of my uh, strikes for Mr. Morgan. Just one and of my strikes for cause. Huh? Why is that? So I'm concerned that Mr. Morgan got a little confused, uh, was already getting a little confused about the terms of arts, terms of art that we use. And some of that was probably your fault. Maybe. Like when I say words like imminent danger, and when I say, um, I think it was something that Stacy said, and then it, in the um, trying to apportion a percentage to, oh, yeah, to the um, to the the standard, because that I could see him back in a jury room, and we're just talking Frank. Uh, I could see him back in a jury room, winding up with my entire jury confused. <laughs> well, that but the question was. You did not clearly lay out what these things meant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, well, if it, wait, no, let me let me finish speaking here. But you did not lay out clearly what these terms meant. Uh -huh. So therefore, the confusion was that we would have this wide spectrum. And I think that, you know, for the same way that you're asking us different, you know, questions for voir dire, I should be able to say, what exactly do you mean here? I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. If you use a term I don't use, don't know, it's right. not improper for me to ask a definition i knew you were going to strike me because of the question that i asked but be, because and, and 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 my my bias is this because you want to make your case and you don't want to have somebody in there who might say wait a minute this is a thinking person i want to get these people to to hear my narrative versus somebody who might look at things very objectively so i was expecting to be stricken by you <laughs> I like to give the lawyers as much time as they want in a board diary examination uh, because it is very difficult to kind of flesh out uh, those things and to have the jury understand it. But Mr. Morgan, you are not uh, 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 the only person that would walk out of a board diary examination totally, you know, confused about what it is that you're supposed to do at the end of this case. I mean, it is a it's a common issue because the cases are so complicated, the laws are very uh, strict, and you may not hear about them here in the beginning. You're not going to get the instructions until the end of the case. Um, and so unless the lawyers can tell you here at the beginning of the case, all of that, and there's only so much they can do in the amount of time that they can. So don't feel like the Lone Ranger. You are- No, no, no. I, I, I don't. But Judge Hunter, see, I've seen this at times that have taken place because I think about what is a, a trial among the jury of our peers. And I've, mm -hmm. and I've gone to some of these cases and I've thought, boy, if I were there, these are not my peers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sorry because, you know, I, I told you about my background and how hard I worked um, to get to a place where I had, you know, a bachelor's degree, a couple of graduate degrees, a position that I'm in. And then I'm going to be judged by somebody who's um, gaming Maybe all day. And I'm like, like and, yeah, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is not a jury of my peers. A jury of my mm -hmm. peers would be somebody that would be, you know, a, at least a little bit on the same level. So I, I always find that to be difficult. And, and as what you just said, though, is that if people don't know what they're looking at, it creates a lot of confusion and people can make a ruling on something that they're completely confused about. And I think it's, especially in a case of parental termination, um, mm -hmm. it's been called the death sentence in a sense. Yes. So this is very, very important that in this type of a situation that we know what we're talking about, what we're looking for, um, because we're basically executing a death sentence on, on a family, on a parent, on mm -hmm. a child, whatever. So I think it's very important that, uh, that the jurors be informed and that the jurors know what we're looking at. So that's my that's my defense of myself and my questions because I would have actually had more questions as well. But I, I know that that was not the place for it. Well, and if I may too, just just understand too, the adversarial role that we're playing. Mm -hmm. I, I need to make it clear. I'm trying to win. Right. Absolutely, and, you are. And, and and understand this. And she's trying and to I win. 
and, and yeah, and and look, I I, I go. We, Sandra and I have been uh, against each other several times, and she, I know that she's going to do what she can to win, and I'm going to do what I can to win. And the board dire process, I'm usually approaching it from the standpoint of, and and the people who practice in this area know this. Yes, I want to get to know these jurors so that I don't be surprised by somebody being on there. But I'm also taking this as an opportunity to try to bring my charisma, make y'all like me, make you like me. And if you like me, you'll probably like my client better. I want to. And we'll uh, listen to you more. I, that's right. And I want y'all. I want y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to gauge the body language and trying to trying to gauge your responses and seeing, do you like me? Because if you like me, I want you on my panel. Yeah. And I want you to like me more than my opponent. So hey, I'm I'm wittier. Hey, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm more deferential to you. I talk about, oh, I like your answer. Oh, that I like that. That that really makes a lot of sense to me. Sounds okay. like you and I are peers in that way. You and I are together. So remember <laughs> that when we are when you go to the jury deliberation room, remember right. who your friend is. I'm trying to bring the court diet process. Yes, right. Right. Oh, All of you are my friends. So forget about the evidence of the argument. Nah, because yes. I'm trying to win. You know, who's, what, what, and, and let me just let me just interject here that this is probably the single point in the trial where these parties will be on an even level. That's right. Because yeah. from from now on. Mr. Dunlop is playing defense. I mean, yeah. that's that's just the bottom line in these cases. I mean, from from yeah. the, from this point on, he's playing defense. It might look like you know he's you know chugging and rugging along right now, but things are about to get nasty. So um, yeah, uh, so he's going to end up playing defense, and that's why he has to come out swinging. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got to come out swinging. So um, and just as an aside, thank you, just but just as an aside, I would have. You, I would have used my preemptive strike. Son, Dre and I would have been using our same preemptive strike, preemptive, uh, preemptive strike against you, too, because I didn't want I didn't want someone to be back there educating my jury. <laughs> I want to be the ones one educating my jury, and, and, and you were so sophisticated and so knowledgeable, and your questions revealed that you aren't going to be a sheep. You're not going to be a person that's just that hey mr dunlop said don't terminate so we got to do what my friend said yeah you're not that kind of person no and, so. I, and i and i actually thought that you might terminate me too or you might strike me as well and, and, right. and but it comes down to my initial point the jury pool may be an uneducated jury pool that can be swayed and i think that that is very terrible in instances of parental right terminations as it would be in the case of a death sentence we know that the innocence project is around that they defend people that have been uh incorrectly incarcerated or put on death row and we need to make sure if we want to have trust in our judicial system that the jury pool is an educated jury pool that they're not going to be swayed by persuasive arguments or by likability it's not a likability te test it is an evidence test so yes i figured you would both strike me <laughs> and this is my problem right but, the, but honestly this is my problem you want you want to have a jury that you can manipulate rather than a jury who might be educated and sophisticated to use your word and to say wait a minute this argument is not true cases are not meant to be easy you know yeah. it's not meant to be easy yeah. and people think coming into jury service oh this is not going to be a problem no it's it's make, meant to be thought provoking to you and mr morgan while you may not be the juror for this case they would probably love you on toxic torts uh, 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 are a <laughs> complex uh, litigation sure. where they need people to understand uh, all the uh, scientific evidence, that type of thing. So, so but, but what you're saying, Judge Hunter, this is very important because um, when she was, when, when I said that to terminate a parent's rights or a parent child relationship is a death sentence. It is. And we should not <laughs> expect anything less. I've gone to courts and I've watched the juries that have been there and they have made, in my opinion, some atrocious decisions. And I've watched people that I've thought this person, I don't even know if they have anything more than a high school education and they're just watching MTV all day or something like that. And they're taking a person's life into their hands or more multiple people's lives into their hands. 
And what I've seen in family courts is that too often our constitutional rights are not protected. It becomes a, a place to persuade people. And, and somehow we've said toxic torts are up here, but family law is down here. Why do we say that? That's not what I meant. Okay, but, but I'm just saying that we should have the same type of standard. We should not be saying, I'm trying to win my case. We should be looking for justice and to do the right thing. Not to when try to say, hey. case is justice, is what they're thinking, Mr. Ms. No, no, I know, and, and I disagree with so their definition. Much. But anyway, thank you. Yes, thank, thank so, you so much.